So video talking about formal charge, so section 4.7 in your textbook. So I've been kind of winking and nudging in class, um, and we have nitrate here that has the same Lewis structure as carbonate, but somehow we have these two different charges here. And one of the ways that we can account for that or explain that is through formal charge. So formal charge um, is a way that we can assign or figure out where exactly this um, overall charge happens on the molecule. In other words, which atom is contributing or accounting for that charge. So formal charge is an accounting system of electron density around an atom in a structure. It's going to take into consideration um, a couple of different things. It's going to take into consideration how many electrons that atom is contributing to the Lewis structure, and then it's going to take that into account with how many electrons it is sharing and how many electrons it has as lone pairs. So these oxygens with the lone pairs, um, those lone pairs are on that atom itself. It's not sharing them at all. And then the two electrons per line uh, is being shared. So to calculate formal charge, we start with the number of valence electrons and we do a formal charge per atom. So each atom in the structure is gonna have a formal charge. So we start with the valence electrons of that atom and we subtract the number of electrons that are in lone pairs and then half of the electrons in the bonds. Uh, so how I think of this is the valence electrons minus the number of dots on that atom, uh, also minus, that minus gets distributed, so subtracting the number of dots from the valence electrons and then the number of lines from those valence electrons. Uh, that's, how I, that's how I remember the equation. Okay, this is an equation you will need to know because we need to represent where our formal charges occur on our Lewis structures. So what makes then a good Lewis structure? The sum of all of our formal charges needs to equal the overall charge on that molecule. So we will um, do the nitrate and carbonate examples momentarily. Um, so we'll see how that sum works. Ideally, all formal charges are zero. This means that the atom is making the number of bonds that it wants to and sharing the appropriate number of electrons that it wants to once it achieves its octet. Now, if this is not possible, uh, which a lot of times it's not, uh, then we want the lowest magnitude of that formal charge. Um, so plus one, plus two, negative one, negative two, those formal charges are common. When we get, start to get up into this plus three, minus three, or um, greater than that, so plus four, plus five, negative four, negative five, those aren't very likely. They can happen, um, but usually there's other loose structures we can consider where we can minimize um, that, those large formal charges. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> the last kind of thing in our good structures is any formal charge that is negative, so any atoms that have a negative formal charge, we would prefer them to be on more electronegative atoms. So oxygen is an atom that likes to have a formal charge of negative. It is okay with that because it's highly electronegative, uh, so it can kind of carry more electrons on the atom um, to get a formal charge of negative. So let's work through the, our two examples here, um, try and explain our nitrate Lewis structure, and notice I've left off the square bracket because uh, we're actually going to apply the charges on the individual atoms in the Lewis structure rather than as a whole, and then we'll look at carbonate to compare that. Um, so a table form is helpful for um, calculating this. We're going to look at our nitrogen here, which the nitrogen has a double bond and two single bonds. So I like to draw myself a little picture of what we're looking at there. Then we have two different types of oxygens. We have an oxygen with a double bond, that oxygen there. And then we have two 
oxygens that have six lone pairs and a single bond. So because their bonding is identical, uh, we can just put them in, calculate them once and know that that formal charge, if there is one, will be for both of these oxygen atoms. So we want to start with our number of valence electrons. They're both, they are all three are bringing, bringing to the molecule. Uh, and then count the number of electrons. So again, counting the dots. And then we want half of the electrons in bonds, or I look at the number of lines that are on that atom. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. There are no dots, no lone pairs of electrons on the nitrogen. And there's one, two, three, four lines on that nitrogen. So we have four total electrons of that half, so sorry, eight total electrons around the nitrogen. And we want half of those, so four. Mm -hmm. Then our fi final column here, we take our 5, minus 0, minus 4, and we have a plus 1. This column will be our formal charge. The double bonded oxygen, we have 6 valence electrons, we have 4 dots, and there are 4 total electrons in this shared um, double bond, so half of that would be two, or I count that there are two lines, so I draw two. So six minus four minus two is zero. Then for our single bound oxygen, six valence electrons, six dots, one line, or two, bond, two electrons in the single bond, we want half of that for one. Six minus six minus one gives us a negative one, but remember there are two of them, so that's a total of negative two formal charge. Our sum of our formal charges, we have a plus one on the nitrogen, and then two negative ones for a total of negative two from the two oxygens. We get an overall charge, formal charge on that molecule of negative one, which is what we needed from that original negative one charge on nitrate. So to complete our Lewis structure here with our formal charges, we just stick our charge on that atom Okay, so the oxygens that are single bonded have a negative formal charge. Nitrogen has a positive formal charge. This now becomes our final Lewis structure, not accounting for resonance. Remember, we would draw the three resonance structures then with our double bond switching around to those other oxygens. Go ahead and try for the carbonate ion. Uh, if you can pause the video, try it on your own, that's the best way to learn. I'll give you a chance to find that pause button, um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and work through this solution. So we have, again, the same type of bonding. Carbon has the double bond and two single bonds. We have a double bonded oxygen and we have two single bound oxygen. Valence electrons, number of electrons, number of bonds, and then our formal charge. Carbon has four valence electrons, zero lone pairs, four bonds, four formal charge of zero. Our double bonded oxygen, has a formal charge of zero, and our single bound oxygen has a formal charge of negative one. So our overall formative charge here, formal charge, excuse me, is negative two, 
because we have two oxygens that have a negative one formal charge. And that is where our formal charge matches the charge of the molecule. And that is why we have a negative two charge on carbonate versus a negative one charge on the nitrate even though they look like they have the same skeletal structure.